I need a show of hands. Who needs one of these study books? I didn't order enough. One, two, I need one. Two. Two. So we've got two, three. Give me one. Four. Five. Anybody else? Five. Okay. I was in Little Rock today at a hearing. And I went to every bookstore and bought every one of these. But in, in all of Little Rock, they only had three. <laughs> so, now if you got here, you saw me handing out some Bibles. Um, last Sunday night, we had a little uh, pre-study group. And uh, we ordered some of these Bibles. So if you're interested in buying one of these study Bibles, if you'll either get with me or if you've got internet access, you got yours off of Amazon. I went ahead and did ChristianBook.com. ChristianBook.com. I got mine off Amazon. Okay. They're about 20, 28, 28, what it was on Amazon. 30 books. 30 books. Now, for those of y'all who've had to sit through this spiel before, this is a study Bible, and it is a single column. If You know, most of your Bibles are double columns on each page. Or scripture, scripture. That's great. Most of my Bibles are that way. Most people's are. But you lose, thank you, Mary, the ability for wide margins to write notes. The good thing about this type of Bible study that we're doing is your Bible's going to become a tool. You're going to mark in it. You're going to write in it. You're going to write about it. This is one of the best ways to get the scripture in you. Now, for those who have already been through this, what's the benefit? Of this, I don't know, but I got a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, remember your <laughs> index cards. Yes, um, for people that have <coughs> one of these Bibles, the inductive study Bible, and if you don't have one, if you could look at somebody that has one, if you look on page nineteen, <coughs> this is a copy. Of um, some scripture that shows the marking technique. I bet you wish I would get in one spot. Um, but you're going to see there's symbols there. Page 19, very front. The benefit of this, you're going to study a block of scripture, and she tells you, she being Kay Arthur, I want you to read this chapter and I want you to mark every reference to God. And how she wants you to mark reference to God, you take a purple marker and you put a, a triangle. Now, purple is the color of royalty. We know that from studying the Old Testament. She also has you mark references to Jesus, our Lord, with purple. You draw a line under the word and put a cross at the end. Um, there's one of them, the very last word on that page. And if you, you can't see that far, and I'm somewhat tethered to the camera. Um, you can look at my Bible later. But it's also in purple. And she has a special way she wants us to mark the Holy Spirit. Again, it is in purple. Purple is the color of royalty. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they're all in purple. And it's just a way to get you used to identifying certain words in the scripture because she's going to ask you questions about it. And it'll help you go back. This is a very systematic way to study the Bible. You can get uh, colored pencils. Now if you're using your regular Bible, if you're going to mark in it, you want to be real careful. You might want to get colored pencils because ink will bleed through on the pages. If you've written in your Bible over the years, you notice it, it sort of fades out. So just regular color pencils will, will work fine. And a composition book. You know, Sunday morning I said, we're going to have homework. At the end of the study guide, she asks questions about what you've read. <coughs> and so you can jot down. Now, why are we going to all this trouble? To remember. Study the Bible. to remember. The more times you go over something, and I used the analogy one time, 
those of y'all who bake from scratch, and I use Miss Jody, and I ask her, do you measure for homemade biscuits? She doesn't. Why not? Well, I've done it so many times. I just know what it's supposed to look like. It's the same thing with Bible study. So tonight, what I want us to do, I'd like everybody, if you've got a Bible, to open them to Psalms 1. And we're just going to go through, and it's going to be a little tedious at first, but we're going to mark some of these words so that we can get used to doing it. Then what we're going to do next week is we're going to do week one. Now, I'm going to get some more of these books. Uh, I hate to admit this with the camera rolling, but I've made copies of week one violating the copyright. And if anybody watches this that does not know me, my name is Betty Richards. <laughs> I live in the Dallas, Texas area. I'm a retired teacher. My sister, Jeannie, the lawyer, told me I should never violate a copyright. Okay, so we're, we're going to look at, if you've got your study book, open it up to page 17. If you don't have a study book, Anybody not have one? There you go. Just and we'll get these study guides into the hands of people that don't have the book, and I'm going to order more books. So in the next two weeks, everybody's going to have one of these study books that want one. So the title tells us what would David do, and if you look at day one, every week there are going to be six days of Bible study. And she has very specific things. So what we're going to do is just go to day one. And we're just going to march through this. She says, as you read any book of the Bible, you'll see the author emphasizes subjects by, repeat, by repeating key words and phrases. That's important. Because she's going to have us mark those key words and phrases. Um, since you'll be making many of these words and phrases, since you'll be marking many of these words and phrases throughout the Psalms, a good technique is to record them and how you plan to mark them on a three by five index card. And, and she tells you if you think, oh gosh, I don't know how to, what to do, she's going to tell you how to mark them, but you can come up with your own system. So. The first instruction she gives us is read through Psalms 1. And it's not very long. And I promise this week uh, we will not... This is going next week to be regular Bible study. But I just... It's so critical we get a good send-off on this. So if you've got your Bible, look at Psalms 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, that's the Lord's law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which, yield fruit, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked, this is verse 4, are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Six verses. Now, we do a lot of Bible reading. If you've been in church any time at all, we read the Bible. It's just what we do. This is Bible study, which is different. But we can do it. So let's look at week one. She tells us to read it. We just did this. See, I'm showing you how easy this is going to be. Page 18, the very top. Now she says, read it again and mark every reference to Lord. L-O-R-D. And she says, to help you get started, we suggest you mark Lord with a purple triangle. She says shaded in yellow. 
but I don't color. But if that's how you want to do it, you do it. So if you've got your purple marker, every, in chapter one, everywhere you see Lord, you just either put a purple triangle, either over the word, near the word, on the side. What you want is when you look at chapter one, you're going to see Lord. Every reference to Lord, purple triangle. I'll be right back. But this is what mine, I don't draw very well, but you see. It's just, well, that's my version of a triangle. For someone who didn't know what color purple was. <laughs> you see here, they have a mauve, and that's what it is. I have to read the word. But that's what your Bible is going to look like. Yeah. It doesn't matter whatever color you use, just consistently use it through the study. So, oh, that's purple. That, that's your blue, right? I never anticipated these. <laughs> 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 so, go through and see chapter 1, the six verses, mark every reference to Lord. Also, look for pronouns that deal with Lord. So, you got it? That's what we're going to do. As you're doing that, we're going to scoot through this. The next word she tells us that she wants us to look for is blessed. Blessed, blessedness, any word that comes out of that. And uh, she says mark it with uh, purple cloud and shade it in pink. Again, I don't color, but... Um, I didn't shade it. Yeah. If you want to shade, that's fine. Just knock yourself out. And my version of a cloud looks like a cantaloupe. Someone dropped it on the road. But... Yeah, that's what So, every reference to... Blessed or blessedness, kind of do the purple cloud. Now, we're shooting through this at a rapid pace because I want us to get all the words so you can see where she's going with this study. Now, if she's going to tell you, I want you to read it again. And this time I want you to mark this word. So you may end up reading a passage three or four times. But I want to tell you, and, and I, I'm remiss in not saying this, what's the first thing you should do before you start Bible study? Pray. 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 Because the Holy Spirit in you will help you figure out what's going on. Uh, Brother Gary said something in one of the study groups. He said, when you read Scripture, it, it only says what it says. You look at the Greek and Hebrew, that's what it says. But there can be many, many, many applications for what that says. The Holy Spirit may speak to you over a verse in a way that he speaks to me and it's something different. And that's what we want to do. We want to learn how to read the scripture correctly and accurately. So, we've marked Lord, we've marked blessed. The next thing she tells us is she wants us to read it again and mark the word but, B-U-T. And you think, that's strange. Why would she do that? Well, in, in this set of scriptures, in chapter 1, but is a word that's like a, a, a flashing light that says we're fixing to compare some things. So, it, however you're going to work... Mark, but she says to do it in black and do a little lightning bolt. I simply did mine with a red line because I don't do well with lightning bolts. Uh, but I just did a, a red line because that's saying, stop, we're fixing to compare some things here. Now, based on what we read, the six verses of chapter one, what, what are we going to compare? The very good. And you don't even have a book. The, <laughs> the righteous to the wicked are the unrighteous. Mm -hmm. Now, 
everywhere that you mark but, there's going to be a comparison. So based on what we've read, and you can cheat on this, you can look. What are some of the characteristics of the righteous? <clears throat> doesn't mix with sinners. Okay. He studies God's word. Studies God. Doesn't mix with sinners. Studies God's word. What else? He meditates on God's law. That's more than Amen. study. That's putting it in it. That's going over and it and over and and over it. What else? He does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Very good. And his delight is in the law of the Lord. We should want to be exactly. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And that's what I hope this study will become. I know now you're thinking, oh, I could kill Jenny. I'm sorry, Betty. (laughs) 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 Um, But the more we study God's Word, the more we're going to delight in it. As I've said in some of the earlier classes, wouldn't you love to be able one morning during your quiet time or your favorite time of the day just to be able to sit down at your kitchen table or your favorite place and just have a conversation with Jesus? Just be able to shoot the breeze with him. Say, you know, Jesus, I've been wondering about this. We can do that with this study. And if you've never had that experience before, it may be no fault of yours. Maybe you just read the Bible. Or maybe you just studied a book about the Bible. But we're actually going to study the Bible. So this is an opportunity to visit with the good Lord. Now, I said that you'd have a composition book. So when you're, the value of it is... um, You learn to do columns. If you're going to compare things, if we're going to compare the righteous to the unrighteous, you might want to get your handy-dandy composition book and one of your non-colored pencils (laughs) and write under the column righteous and wicked. And then because you, you will have marked these words in that chapter, you can go and look at your text and say, okay, every word that I marked with the righteous symbol, I'm going to put on my righteous column. And the same thing for how I marked wicked. So then, side by side, you can look at the comparisons between the righteous and the wicked. Now, there is no way in this short time that we have together tonight, it's the same thing as as you study all week. But I'm I'm hoping you'll get a taste of it. So when I look at my column that I did, uh, righteous, they're blessed. They're separate from sinners by lifestyle. They delight in and meditate on God's Word. They're productive and healthy, and they prosper. And when I go back and I look at my scripture that I marked with the, whatever code that you use, I look at wicked, and these are words that just jump out automatically and tell me what the scripture says about them. The wicked are condemned, they are separate from the righteous. They are wind-driven chaff. What is that? What picture do you get from that? They just go with the flow. Gone. Whatever the yeah. religion of the day is. Exactly. And then they're perishable. Are we as believers perishable? No. Our eternity is in heaven. We are going to live forever. Now, the wicked, they're going to live forever. But I want you to get this word picture in your mind. They are going to perish forever in hell. Where we are going to be blessed and prosper in heaven. So there are very uh, visual words that are used in Psalms. Now, When you start doing this type of Bible study, you're going to work all week. And you're going to read and you're going to mark the words and you're going to answer um, the questions that she asked. And if you look at, in your book, page 23. Okay. 
day seven. So you have six days of you, you do this Bible study, you do your homework. And I'm going to tell you, when you get started, it might be a little slow till you get used to it because we have apparently this issue with what color is this. <laughs> um, but I think once we get over that hurdle, there is just going to be no stopping us. I found a color. She found it. It said the word. Okay. Very good. Y'all need help with colors. See, Miss Juanita, she apparently has a labeled set of colored pencils. Well, I do too. Well, very good. That should help you, Miss I finally Trigger. found them. Very good. <laughs> Look at day seven. It's going to tell you store in your heart, Psalms 5 3. It's a memory verse. And not on your index cards. They're easier to learn on an index card. Well, uh, let me, that is an excellent idea, but let me say about your index card, you're going to get more and more words on it, and that's just going to be a quick reference. Oh, I'm reading, how am I supposed to mark this word? You look, this is for consistency in marking your Bible. Now, you can be like Barry and buy a big old stack of index cards, and you can get a brand new one and put your memory verse on it and carry it with you. But I really encourage you, when I first started doing these kind of Bible studies, I tried to skip this issue with the index card, and it was a disaster. Now, what did you say put on the index card? <laughs> she, how she tells you how to mark the scripture. It's in your book. Okay. You know, she's going to give you symbols. But, you know, and that's the thing, so you can consistently mark the same words the same way throughout your study of Psalms. And as you've seen, as we've kind of attempted to shoot through some of these homework assignments, you see the, the value of it. You've marked it, you know exactly what it is, so when she asks you a question, how do you compare the righteous to the wicked or the unrighteous, you've got it marked in your Bible. So... Day six is the last day of Bible study. And um, day seven is your memory verse. And she says, read and discuss Psalms 1 through 8. Well, that's what you've read all week. Those are the chapters. And then she has questions for discussion or individual study. And I really encourage you, really, really, really encourage you to answer these questions. And this, these are great questions to put in your notebook. The only person that's going to see this notebook is the Holy Spirit and anybody you may show it to. Because we have these books, you might want to put your answers in your book and write. But I encourage you to do that because these questions are designed to get you to think about the scripture that you've been studying all week. Because if we're not going to meditate on God's Word, and get it in us and use it. Why would we even do this? Well, why is? Because I believe we as a church are really getting organized. And there seems to be a consensus among us as church members. We want to reach out to this community and share Jesus. And if we're going to do that, we hope to bring in the lost that they may come to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's just not enough to give them fire insurance. We want to be able to come along beside them and say, let me help you study the Word of God. We may very well get people that have never looked in a Bible. They might not understand Old Testament, New Testament. So they're going to need mentors, people who can come along beside them and say, I know it's confusing. But I can help you learn to make sense of it. Now, everybody with me so far? Maybe not on all the little details. Betty, not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just look at a couple of these questions. The first one, what situations in the psalmist's life caused him to cry out to God? Now, he feared for his life most of the time. Yes. You know, King David wrote a large number of the Psalms. And he is, next to Jesus, my favorite Bible person because he was so long. He was a warrior. He was a poet. He was a musician. He was an adulterer. He was a murderer. 
but he was a friend of God. And that all of us should draw great comfort from knowing if God can use King David. I haven't murdered anybody. <laughs> you know, maybe there's hope for me. So, these questions are designed to get you to think about what you've read for the week and to start making application of the scripture to you. And one of the things that I hope you will find as you walk through this study is that when the words just jump off the page at you and it's just like Jesus suddenly comes and sits down in a chair across from him and says, Roscoe, <coughs> this is what I want you to get, buddy. Or Cor. He'd probably call you Miss Cor because you know, he's very <laughs> old. <laughs> Y'all did go to junior high school together. But, um, you know, he's going to speak to you about needs that you have. Um, and then the other good thing about it, we get this scripture in our mind, in our heart, and then at work, or we encounter somebody, and they're just having a horrible time. If that scripture's in you, the Holy Spirit will go, hey, Dale, share with them this chapter, this verse. And it's there. But we have to have it in us before it can go through us to other people. I mean, we're talking about revolutionizing our own lives individually and corporately as believers. Can you imagine the difference it would make in this community if people started taking the scripture to heart? Oh, people need Jesus. They need Jesus for their salvation. They need Jesus for their sanity. And they need Jesus to be able just to make it through the day. And you may very well be the person that God chooses because you're a willing vessel to take in the scripture that he might use you to get his scripture back out and to dramatically and radically change somebody's life. That's why we're doing it. We're not doing it because we need to sell these books. We're not doing it for any other reason but to glorify and lift up Jesus Christ. And you know, I don't want you to answer out loud, but I really want you to honestly ask yourself this question. Have I really worked? I mean worked to get the scripture into my life <coughs> in a way that it can come through me out to somebody else. You know, I, I think about how hard I have worked at other things. And you may think how hard you worked. If you were in the military, going through basic training or specialized, if, uh, going to school, getting a degree or an advanced degree. Um, the amount of effort that we put into something, you know, it means something to us. This study is designed to get us some spiritual equity in us. And I've said this before, and, and, and I know you're getting tired of it. We, as a church, have been exposed to the truth of the scripture that says you are to know my word, and you are to be able to apply it, and you are to be on the lookout against false teaching, and you are to go out and minister to people. We have been exposed to that. You know, this church made a commitment for uh, the courageous, the resolution. Many people publicly made the declaration, and uh, many of us did it privately. But we can no longer act like we didn't know this. That's not an option for us anymore. Each and every one of us is here, I believe, by divine appointment. Because why else would you work all day, either at home or at work, and then come here? 
Why would you do that? It's a divine point. It's a divine obligation. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had that wonderful video series, The Bema Seat. And I don't know who has the tapes or the, the DVD, but if, if, if I think they're out on loan. But if you didn't see that, you need to borrow those because it's the story about a believer who yeah. stands in front of Christ at the Bema Seat and has to account for his life as a Christian. We have them, but they don't work. Yeah. They work, but no volume. Okay. No. Well, we can, what, you know. Somebody else can try. Yeah. I just encourage you uh, to get them and watch them. Uh, we, we show them up here, and it is powerful. But it really got me to thinking about what is my personal obligation and responsibility as a child of the King. And one of them is Bible study in prayer and to minister to people. So, look at page 24. This is my favorite part of the study. This is what I call the cheat sheet. Uh, thought for the week. This is where the authors of the study come and recap it and, and help you understand the big spiritual picture of all the work that you did during the week. Now, I've shared this with several people. When I do these Bible studies, the first thing I do the first day is I sit and I read straight through the entire week. You know, that's not that many pages. What, five, six, seven? I just read straight through them. And then I've got an idea of what I'm going to cover that week. The next thing that I do is when I start on the individual day study, I take a highlighter and I highlight the instructions, the words I'm supposed to mark, the things I'm supposed to do so that I don't skip them and I don't miss them. And then I, I just encourage you, if she tells you to do something, do it. And what you will find as you go through the week, when you get to thought for the week, you're going to go, I get it. I get it. That's what I got. I'm not off the mark. And, and the other thing, if you look at those of you that I uh, made copies of, you don't have this. But on page 193 at the back of the book is an outline. And it's for each chapter that you're going to study. And you just do a couple of words that will tell what that chapter was about. For instance, chapter 1 could be comparison between the righteous and the wicked. It doesn't have to be long. But if you'll do this consistently with every chapter... When we finish this study, you're going to have a complete index of what those books are or, or what those chapters were about. Now, the benefit of this, let's say, later after we've gone off and done some other studies, something <coughs> comes up and you think, man, I know there's a scripture. I remember this from my Bible study in Psalms. Well, instead of getting the Bible and reading the whole chapter, you can go over here to your self-made outline and you can go through and go, oh, yes, there it is on uh, the 54th chapter. That's, that's where it is. So it's a great memory trigger. So to kind of get us all up to date, we've covered quickly, but we have covered how to work this study. And what you're going to find is that a lot's going to be asked of you initially, but I'm going to promise you, in 30 minutes, starting out, you can probably do a large portion of that day's study. And then you'll find your time will get shorter and shorter and shorter. Now, you may say, but I don't read well. Or, you know, I have a comprehension issue or whatever. God will honor whatever you do. Not being able to complete the study is no excuse for not doing anything. End of story. They recommend that you study every day. 
because it's a habit that you'll get into. Now, my addiction is not TV. Um, more evenings than not, it's off at my house. But whatever your favorite show is, whether it's a 30-minute show or it's an hour show, I think on the day that we stand before Christ at the beam of seat, he's not going to ask you about an episode of CSI. He's not going to ask you about what you thought about American Idol. He's not going to ask you about the weather or entertainment tonight or uh, PBS shows. That's not coming up here. But he is going to ask you about things that last. And that is the scripture. <coughs> so I'd really encourage you. Is it not worth 30 minutes a day for you to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart visit with God? And I promise you, the study, you'll pick it up quick. If you'll remember, what's the first thing? Pray. Pray. Second thing, read the day's instructions. She's not asking you to do physics. She's saying, I want you to read these verses. I want you to look for these words. I want you to mark them. And if you don't know, if you don't have your own system to mark it here, use mine. This is what she's saying. Every question she's going to ask you about the scripture, it's going to be something she told you to mark. Now, there are going to be questions where she's going to ask you application-type questions. What would you get from this? Has there been a time in your life that you were faced with this? And there's no wrong answer to those. Because remember, uh, Brother Gary said, what the Scripture says is what it says. There's only one thing that it says but the applications are many. So, any questions, comments? I have one comment. Yes, ma'am. I want to say thank you. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're thank welcome. Thank you for you putting your time and effort into I'm happy very to do it. and I appreciate it. I am happy to do it. Let me give y'all my cell phone number. <coughs> 718-2617. If you have any questions about Would you repeat that, please? 718-2617. <laughs> if you have any questions, call me. Uh, I'm on Facebook. For those of y'all who have Facebook, or my email account is J, or my email address is J E Richards at Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, net, N-E-T, dot, com. Uh, I don't, I'm not on it every day, but, you know, the best way to get hold of it is call. And, and if I'm busy, I'll say, this is a bad time for me, can I call you back? And if I do that, don't be offended if I don't call you back. That just simply means I forgot. <laughs> so, call me again. <laughs> so, Question. Phone number one more time. Seven. <laughs> one. Eight. <laughs> two, six. One, seven. Thank y'all for coming and um, work your study. Uh,